In this video, we're taking a look at Jivo Inc. Now, of course, Jivo Inc. has been in the news quite a bit lately, and we want to help you make sense as to whether or not you should be looking to purchase the stock and exactly what the potential value is. So to do that, we're going to jump into the financials. We're going to have a look at the fundamentals and help you make sense of the stock. Before we jump into this video, I just want to ask you a really big favor. I need you to click on that like button and turn it blue because it helps us with the YouTube algorithm. So if you can go ahead and click on the like button now. So of course, Jivo has had a lot of activity on their stock over the last while. And I really wanted to jump into the financials and really help you make sense of the stock. So the first thing is that market cap. We have a market cap of 1.3 billion, 1.13 billion. Uh, the price on the 10 year was 119.52 at the inception and currently trading at 5.71. So just an absolutely huge drop off on the stock price. And then of course that P ratio non-existent at the moment, no profit margin. And uh, they do however have positive net equity at 146 million. No dividend of course on the stock and they have negative free cash flow at negative 29.273 million. Now coming down into the year on years, a couple of things that are interesting to note. Obviously the number of shares outstanding have gone up quite considerably. Have a look at the three year figure and then have a look at the trailing 12 months. That's just a huge jump forward in the number of shares out there. So definitely there's been a lot of share dilution. Look at the total assets. The assets have gone up a little bit from 107 to 152. However, liabilities uh, looking at 18248, uh, moving to 20. 5720 and down to 5720 in the trading 12 months. So they've actually managed to do pretty well on the liabilities. However, this hasn't exactly been what they're looking for on total equity. Total equity has uh, gone from 88 indeed up to 146, but it's been a sideways movement over the last year. And then looking at total revenue, total revenue is actually down. If you go here on the three year 32838, currently trading at 1. 498. Gross profit is uh, also a little bit sideways, negative 8730, negative 7360 on the trailing 12 months. And then pretty much some important thing to note here is that pretty much operating income, net income from continued operations, operating cash flow and free cash flow, all of those are in the red and even gross profit is in the red. So definitely a lot of little issues creeping up for the stock. Now, of course, they have had moments of uh, growth. If we go and have a look here on the free cash flow, they managed to pull it back from 26 to 25. They managed to pull operating cash flow back from negative 20 to negative 19. But the fact of the matter is these are all still negative numbers. And that for me is a major, major area of concern. Now, coming down to our 12 point fundamental checklist. Now, before we jump jump into this checklist. If uh, you are new to the channel and you want to know exactly why we've got these 12 questions that we ask around every stock that we evaluate, you can check the link card up above. I'm going to add a link in here that you can go and check this the video that I created really explaining these 12 points. So definitely go and check that out after this video and uh, it will not only help you understand our process but it will probably get you to ask some more critical questions when you're starting to look at investing in stocks. Now, Coming to the share price, the first question we ask ourselves is, has the share price doubled on the 10 year or since inception? And of course, that is not the case. They've lost an enormous amount of ground. Next, we're looking for a stock with a P ratio between one and 25, and unfortunately, they don't meet the criteria. We're also looking for profit margin in excess of 10%. Unfortunately, that's not the case. They do, however, have assets greater than liabilities, so they have positive net equity. And of course, because there's no dividend on the stock, their dividend cost is less than free cash flow. And that's pretty much where the good news ends. Uh, number of shares outstanding have not been going down. In fact, there's been considerable share dilution over the last three years. Total revenue hasn't gone up in the last three years. Gross uh, operating profit has not been going up consistently. Operating income has not been going up consistently. Net income from continued operations has not been going up consistently, nor has operating cash flow and nor has free cash flow. So all of these big areas of concern. Now, of course, this brings us down to the scoring and the verdict. So on the fundamentals, they have a mere 16.67% of the criteria met. Uh, on the negative side, 83.3% of the fundamentals that we require to invest into a stock have not been met. Now, interestingly enough, the industry median target for this stock is 17 bucks. And I think the analysts are absolutely 
out of touch with reality. Now, of course, a lot of people are gonna argue when they look at the stock, especially a lot of the growth and momentum investors are gonna come to me and say, well, listen, Justin, uh, you're just absolutely way out when you're predicting five bucks on the stock. This is a growth stock, it's going places. Well, I encourage you to go look at the trading history of the company. Go and have a look how far back these loss losses have been racked up. And then in addition to which, just have a look at the return on equity and have a look at the return on asset. Negative 12.42% and negative 5.10% respectively. And uh, in real terms, I'm predicting about 0.71% uh, 0 0.71%. Uh, per share lost, and that in real terms is about negative 12.43. Now, if you decide to go in and invest on the stock, uh, my sentiment is that it should be a speculative play at best. Of course, like I said, there's not enough fundamentals here. Unfortunately for me to make this uh, an investable company. So for me, if I were to put any money into this, it would be a speculation. Now, full disclosure, if you go and check out my eToro profile, link is down below. I have a very small position in Jivo. Um, and purely, I'm doing this just as a far out speculative play. I actually like what the company does. I actually fundamentally like their brand. Um, however, the company just isn't making money and the fundamentals aren't there. So it's money I'm prepared to lose and I'd advise you only put money into this company if you are indeed prepared to lose it. Before you go, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to our channel and join the Global Money Tribe. And because I know you need a little bit of extra motivation every month, I'm going to be giving away a signed copy of my book, The Money Secret, as well as some really cool channel merch. So if that's not a big enough motivation to subscribe, Come and subscribe for the content because every single day we're adding absolutely great content teaching you to invest, save and manage your money situation.